So in the first day of this unit, we talked about how to sketch a possible derivative of a given uh, function that is also sketched. So the main things we talked about was the first thing we want to look for is these points where the function is at a maximum or a minimum. Because if we think of the slope of the function at this point, well, it's totally flat, right? These are the flat sections of the function. So if we think about the derivative represented, well, the derivative must be zero at these points. So we are going to, if we're going to sketch the derivative at these maxes and mins, we're going to put a point on the x-axis, the x-intercept, because that is a showing that the derivative is zero. Now, the other thing to notice is this function starts by increasing. So it's increasing, it's pretty steep, it's flattening out, right? So it's approaching this slope of zero right here. But if it starts increasing, the derivative must be positive. It must start positive. So what happens is the derivative is positive, 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 and zero. So again, let's look at this a little bit closer. So this is saying that the function is increasing and the function is pretty steep. As we move left to right, the derivative is getting smaller, which means the function is getting less steep, still increasing, but increasing at a less steep rate. So it's increasing, it's increasing, it's increasing, it's slowing down, it's totally flat. At this point, the function is now decreasing, so the derivative must be negative. And it's decreasing kind of steadily at first, but then it starts decreasing at a steeper and steeper rate, right? And then eventually, okay, it's still decreasing, it's still decreasing, still decreasing, but it's flattening out, and boom, it's zero again. So then what happens right here? When, it, when, the, when the slope is zero, when it's totally flat, well, now it starts increasing again, so the derivative must be positive. And it starts increasing at a pretty slow rate, but it gets steeper and steeper and steeper over time, and it's going to continue getting steeper based on the path of this graph. So what's going to happen to the derivative? Well, it's going to be positive again. It's going to keep getting bigger, 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 bigger. So looking at this next one, it starts by increasing. It's still increasing. It's flattening out. It hits that point where the slope is totally flat. So we need to put, if we're going to sketch the derivative, that needs to be the x-intercept of the derivative. And then, oh, it starts decreasing pretty steadily at first, but it really increases quickly to the point where it's decreasing at a steeper and steeper rate. So if we're drawing this, we're going to say, okay, we're up here. The function is increasing and it's doing so very quickly, but it's steadying out over time. And then we hit this point where the slope is totally flat. And then... Uh, and then we're now decreasing from that point on, and it's going to keep decreasing faster and faster. This is supposed to be a straight line if I had done a better job drawing it. Okay, so then let's look at this next one. It starts by decreasing at a very steep rate. It hits a point where it's at a minimum, where the slope is flat. Then it starts increasing again, and then it flattens out again, and the slope is flat, and then it decreases, slope is flat, it increases from that point on. So let's sketch. We say it starts by decreasing at a steep rate, but it's steadying out over time, and then hits a totally flat slope. Now it starts increasing. Okay, now it's going to start steadying out, and then it's flat again. Now it's decreasing, 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 flat again, and then it's going to increase from that point on. So something else we should notice with these is how they relate to the power rule, which we learn later in the unit. So we know the derivative of x squared is 2x, so we're taking the derivative of a quadratic function that ends up being linear. The derivative of x cubed by the power rule is 3x squared, so the derivative of a cubic function ends up being quadratic. And then the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed, so the derivative of what we say is a quartic function is cubic. So if we come up here, we see this looks like a nice cubic function based on its structure, and the derivative that we sketched end up looking quadratic, right? This is a nice quadratic function. Um, it's, there must be a negative out front because it's going down, down. So then we end up with the derivative, which is this linear function. And then here, this would have to be like a quartic function, and then its derivative is cubic, just again, based on how we, how we had to sketch it, based on what we know about derivatives. So our visual derivatives actually end up relating to this power rule that we ended up learning later in the unit. And it's pretty, like both, we can make this connection, it's consistent with what we'd expect. What we'd expect for the, vi the visual derivative is consistent with what the power rule says. So now I'm gonna put in a picture that would relate to some of the con questions we did. This gets a little bit tougher now. Okay, so here's a graph. 
All right, there it is. So this looks like it might be a square root function, but that doesn't matter because what the con question is going to ask is it's going to say, which is the best approximate of um, the approximate of f prime 16 if this is f of x. And then it would say like a, we'll say 4, b, we'll say 0.1, c, negative 4, d, negative 0.1. So when you look at a question like this, well, we say, well, what does this, the instantaneous slope look like right here at 16 comma 4, right? So if you were to draw a tangent line, you would draw one that's like, it's well, it's, it's positive sloping, but it's pretty steady. It's pretty close to zero. So immediately, we're going to eliminate the negative options because this is an increasing function, so the derivative can't be negative at 16. And then we look and we say, well, 4 would mean this is a pretty steep function. Like That means that its instantaneous slope is 4. So if we look at this, uh, it doesn't seem reasonable. It seems more reasonable that it would be a closer to 0 slope. So we eliminate 4 and we say 0.1 is our correct answer. It's probably about 0.1. Another type of question we run into is which of these is bigger, f prime or f prime a or f prime b? If we're looking at a function f of x, so the the thing we say is, well, wow, this function looks steeper at a than it does at b, right? If we if we were to draw a tangent line, which of these would be steeper? Well, they would be steeper at a. But the thing is, f prime a is negative and f prime b is positive, right? So if we look at a number line, if we look at a number line, here's zero. Okay, so over here we have negative numbers, over here we have positive numbers. Well, any negative number is going to be over here. B is going to be somewhere right here. So if we were to sketch this, we would say, okay, well, B is positive, it's, the slope is kind of flat, so maybe B is like right here, right? A is negative, but the slope is pretty steep, maybe A is right here. Well, A, or sorry, F prime A and F prime B is what we should be saying. Well, so F prime A then, F prime A is smaller than F prime B because f prime a is negative while f prime b is positive. But if we were talking about steepness, we would say, yeah, the, the function is steeper here, but it's just decreasing at a steep rate. Well, here it's kind of steady, but it's increasing at a steady rate. So sorry to jump back here, but here, like that's it. That's it for what we did on the first day. And uh, just one more thing that people get really confused about is if we're looking at these, right, the black function is the original function, and the green is the derivative of the black, well, they think, well, okay, but why is the derivative decreasing if the function's increasing? Because the derivative tells us information about the slope. So the function's increasing, yes. The derivative tells us the function's increasing, but it also tells us the function's flattening out, right? It tells us, yeah, it's, it's increasing, but it's approaching a max right here. That's where it starts decreasing. Okay, so this whole time, the function's decreasing. Even right here, the function's still decreasing, even though the derivative's increasing. The derivative's increasing because we're approaching a slope of zero now. We're going from a negative slope to a zero slope where it then switches positive again. So you need to be really careful about what your brain is telling you and make sure you double check all your thinking when it relates to a function related to a derivative because it's really easy uh, for a lot of mix-ups to occur.